T-Bird versus Squeaky G. It's an A-League. Mega random. Uh, Squeaky G's home map. High view. T-Bird's home map. That's me, by the way. We start on Kawasan. Looks like uh, I banned King of the Hill, Hideout, Hill and Dale first. Ended up with some randoms. I should not. I shouldn't have randomed here. We could have ended up on Nomad Mega Random, but uh, I wasn't thinking. Dry Arabia is the first veto ban for Squeaky G, and then Golden Heights Base and Prairie. We're here. We made it. We're back in Age Four with another A League match. This is the second A League match. Uh, for age four, been, there's been fewer games played, at least uh, at the lower levels, for this Winter Bash three, uh, age four side of things. But here we are. T Bird in purple is playing the Mongols, kind of his main civ. Uh, and on the other side, Squeaky G uh, going as the Malians in orange. Also another main civ, main color combo situation. So these players are are bringing it. Uh, for the win here. No messing around, a no funny business. And it looks like T-Bird going for the early rush Mongol build. The way this works is you start with the Gur. Uh, you just instantly drop it on the straggler trees and you chop one straggler tree completely down with five bills so then you know you got 150 foot wood. Gives you enough... Oh, hello phone. Gives you enough wood to build one military production building. In this case, it's going to be a stable. And uh, as, as well as the Ubu, obviously, which will allow a double production of units. Do I have to go on Do Not Disturb? Or are we good? We are uh, we're on Kawasan, a custom script by EGC TV. And kind of a forward port from Age of Empires to Kawasan. Love to see the the tradition carrying on. There are two lakes in the middle with some deep water fish. There's a lot of berries in the very center. So there's a lot to fight over in the middle of the map. For now, I think this is a fantastic spot for the Mongol TC. <laughs> we really got lucky here. I'm I'm purple by the way, casting my own game once again. Uh, protecting that gold pretty well. Just a small gold to start with. We got the Uvu, we got double wood lines. Looking really good there. The other side, Squeaky G with the Malians. That rear pit mine. Thought I had a way to switch. Oh, I think I reset my hotkeys. Hang on, chat. Can I go back to the, uh, let me go back. I think if I choose this, then I'll be able to, uh, yeah, there we go. All right. Anyways, we have Squeaky G here with Mine's pit mine. With houses around it, we'll provide a trickle of gold. It means you won't have to mine any gold to go up to the next stage. Will there be any fishing? Well, we'll have to see. There should be. There's plenty of fish in the middle. What is this? A thousand food that also slowly regenerates over time. Four of those could be worth. And uh, at least to start us off here, we have some early horsemen from our Mongol player. That's uh, coming, gonna be coming in groups of two since they have this double production ability when they're around the Ubu, which is built on a stone, on a stone deposit and slowly generates that, slowly gathers that stone. Uh, the Mongols have kind of a unique relationship with stone in that they can't really use it to build any buildings. They can't build stone walls or towers or castles. They use it for the unique bonuses, uh, which you get from all buildings within the radius of the Uvu. And the one we're utilizing right now is Early Horseman X2 double production for the same resources plus the stone cost of 120. There it goes again. You get more for your money. So just for now, we have a dock for purple. And some early horsemen just over here in the far corner for some reason. I think they were chasing the scout down, maybe. 
and Khan also out on the field. Is villager double production ever good? Um, maybe in Imperial Age when you get the white stupa or something like that. Definitely not right now. There's a lot more optimized things you could be doing with that stone. Even just like uh, upgraded wheelbarrow or like brought double bit axe if you're if you're really just going full eco, but. Almost, almost always, it's going to be military production, and spears or uh, or horsemen or whatnot. It's really just too expensive on the stone. It's uh, 124 stone. Mm. You can't really do that consistently either, so you don't see it too often. Maybe they'll rebalance it at some point. Who knows? Now this horseman group has been spotted by Squeaky G, I believe. I believe there was a dead scout down here. Nope. No, there wasn't. The overlay says no. But it's going to move in and see what damage we can do in the Dark Age. Squeaky with the barracks. Uh, going to be making some Donzos. The unique Malian Spearman equivalent. Also, I hate to go into the settings menu again, but we need to turn off edge panning for the casting because that will make it much less jumpy. Make it much smoother for us to deal with. Okay, horsemen find the enemy TC. We use the maneuver arrow to escape. Khan loses his life. So that's going to be GG, ultimately. Nah, I'm just kidding. But, back at home, purple dropping the deer stones with four villagers. I This is like the one build order I ever really got the handle of back in the day when, when age four was the game that I was all about. We have a villager also moving. Hang on. So Deer Stone's coming down. Squeaky G with the scouts on the dock. Gonna try to deny that fishing. This villager looks like it's moving towards the other pond. Squeaky is not really trying to fish at all though. And we do have these horsemen gathering bounty and destroying houses. Malians are kind of uniquely vulnerable to uh, to this kind of kind of Mongol raid play, right? Because the Mongol player gets resources from destroying the houses. These houses, there you go, plus 25, plus 25. These houses are weaker than normal uh, Civ houses would be. They're only 500 HP, and they're needed for the, uh, the Malian player to get resources to get that gold. Looks like Purple gonna clean up those scouts on the dock. With a few more horsemen. The deer stones will provide. Let's see. Yam network speed. Which is just a speed boost to all units nearby. You can see it here. Speed increased by 15%. You don't get the ability to unlock that otherwise. Unless you uh, research it from a outpost in Castle Age. Or beyond. And... I think that's it. Is that all that it does? Yes. There's a big, it's a big yam network radius. So that'll make the entire economy much more efficient. Or purple. Mansakori coming down for Squeaky G. This a landmark will produce gold per minute, or you could toggle it into stone. Squeaky needs to burn down the docks. Yes, absolutely. I think he knows it too. He's trying to beeline that, but it's hard to. Uh, to do everything and you're getting you're getting burned down at home seven donzos though not going to be really easy to contest the donzos for t-bird here there's not any army there or a purple player who can really deal with that so maybe squeaky will decide to move out with those that'll leave him a little more exposed at home though Going for more raids on the wood line for purple. How many fishing ships do we have here? Four and two. That is gonna be Good worker kills. No worker kills yet for either side. Impressive stuff. Scout goes down to the Donzos, and they're in the right place at the right time. And Zakori coming up. Keyboard trying to decide what to do here, going for a market, try to balance out this economy. Things are a little rusty around here. 
both uh, both of us, T Bird Squeaky G, a little more uh, involved in the Age Two scene these days. So might end up being a little less balanced. I noticed in particular wood takes so much longer to gather in Age of Empires 4. So we'll probably see some market abuse there from purple. This is looking kind of scary for Squeaky. Yeah, it's a lot later to Feudal Age. D-Bird getting some of these eco upgrades, wheelbarrow, uh, the chopper. Almost went, <laughs> almost went for Stepper now, which is the gold gathering eco uh, landmark there. D-Bird pushed off of the houses for now, decides to go for the curl tie, which uh, very powerful military age three castle age landmark um nearby units within the aura heal, heal plus one health every one second gain additional 20 percent damage really strong for siege pushing man at arm timing push which i think is what we're going to see here with the double barracks out um especially with how quickly we're going to end up here in castle age it's a huge amount of damage so pretty much it's going to make a any significant army even if they're outnumbered or outgunned really hard for the enemy to kill as long as they're within the radius used to be that the con also had to be nearby but that has been that requirement has been removed because just basically no one was ever going for the curl tie so they decided let's make it a little more uh, viable blacksmith also now for t-bird and looks like where did that wasn't there a second barracks here what, did we wheel that off somewhere? Oh, we wheeled it around by, uh... Is that even... Okay, I'm not sure what the positioning of that's all about. Kuriltai is now moving out, though. And Man at Arms production is underway. Donzos, though, looks like they're gonna try to burn down the dock. They're, they're looking over the water at these guys. Villager difference, as well, is pretty significant. No villager kills yet, but... I guess it's just that consistent production... I think this, uh, I don't know, I, I've been a little bit more active in, in age 4 than, uh, than Orange as well, so could come down to that, but see if he gets this dock down, that's a good first step. As that Kuriltai, looks like it was going to try to move forward into the, uh, the, the middle there, but might drop it down here to deal with the Donzos first. Looks like that dock is maybe going to go down, too. A couple of Keshiks for our purple player. Just hiding, stalling out, lurking, looming in the back of the base of Orange. Waiting for their moment. Waiting to be select all military to wait to a different location. <laughs> okay. And here's the thing about these man-at-arms timings. There's not a lot the Malians can do right now. These Donzos, they're not gonna they're gonna be doing like one damage per hit to the man at arms, will which will just instantly heal it up under the curl tie as well. So 1616 military right now. Purple has dropped two more barracks. Now we're up to five, three more barracks. It's just gonna be a man at arms spam for the time being. See if he can be fast enough to do the damage. Orange takes a nice fight against these uh, horsemen though. Going for the con, actually, first. Purple are going to be able to pull away the other ones. Yeah, so those men at arms, very strong. As we saw, actually, uh, with the... Uh, I think... Ham Senpai... Uh, clock match last week, which will be uploaded in the next three days to YouTube. Um... Just multiple, just straight man at arms, palace guard rushes. Very strong tactic, especially uh, with the eco advantage here. We have 5137 on the economy. And a lot of that actually is not uh, idle TC. A lot of that is fish. We got, what, four, ten fish here. So ultimately, villager difference is not quite as significant. 4138. But we can see on the food per minute. It's just the dis distribution in general. Here's the curl tie dropping down. 
it was able to be placed here. The enemy wasn't able to block it, which is something that people often try to do. Squeaky G gonna try to leave the radius of that cruel tie for now, go under the town center. But you see doing minimal damage for the time being. And it looks like Purple is gonna just opt to burn down some houses for now. As uh, another dock goes down, looks like the uh, left pond was redocked though well, for now. Apparently there's an explosive ship here as well. Not sure how that happened. Left dock, right dock goes down. Squeaky being being persistent with that. And he is now in Castle Age with the Ferinda Garrison. A strong landmark as well here. Gonna be going for Mr. Body Warriors, anti-armor. And uh, here's a situation where it's a little awkward to beat the Mongols. Curl tie unable to be placed for a moment there until we found the right spot. But now these men at arms are gonna be able to heal up. And uh, let's just uh, let's just do a little bit. Of let's just do a little bit. Look at these guys; they're unstoppable. They can't be killed. Until that is, Musafadis come in. It's a bit of an upgrade advantage. Well, not really. The upgrades are similar, and the Musafadis themselves are pretty weak. They just do a lot of damage. They don't have a lot of HP, so uh, Man Arms, under the Curl Tie influence, able to still hold them off. Like I mentioned, Musafadi warriors are anti-armor. So they are definitely the right choice into Man at Arms. They should ultimately win out if the numbers advantage is there. Or if they're like equal numbers. And that should be fairly easy to do as long as there's enough gold for uh, for our orange player. For McGarrison, you're able to. What is this? Reduces barracks and archer range units five at a time. Unit cost is converted fully to gold and reduced by 10%. So. t -Bird definitely looking ahead in this game, especially with both. Um, Pond's gonna drop another dock on that south pond and send a ram all the way across the map. Okay. Going for a second Uvu. This one has run out of stone, so the like stone deposit underneath it. Which I could be like, yes, it does use it up, so you're gonna have to move to a new Uvu ultimately, eventually. And it looks like not going for any TC dives or anything, just denying the gold for now. Squeaky G doesn't really have access to any other gold either, besides the Mansicore, which is actually on stone? Interesting. I think that's what this is indicating, right? So trickling in stone, he's mining stone right now. Mm, I'm watching for one of these two numbers to tick up. It's not really happening. I don't know. Maybe he just got some gold. I whatever, whatever. We're, we're we're looking at the game, and it looks like a lot of houses going down for Squeaky G. Sixty out of fifty, actually, very housed right now. He's orange. Mongols famously don't have to build houses either. So, we'll see how this push goes. The uh, yeah, we're in radius. Squeaky actually moving out of the radius of the curl tie with the man arms. Now they're all on the wrong side, chasing those guys down. And uh, the Rams, a little bit undefended for the time being. He's gonna he's gonna target them with the villagers. It is on stone, yeah. But it's I guess I guess also because he's mining it. It's hard to tell if it's going up or not. Villagers will burn down all the Rams, but. It's gonna come at a great cost. 14 bills down for Squeaky G. And more to come. 15 now. Looks like these Misfadis might be able to get the. Yeah, they're definitely getting the cleanup now. There's only three man at arms left. And the timing, I think, for man at arms now is kind of run its course, right? Damage was done. Value found, but T-Bird gonna have to find a new, another answer, another tactic to use now. It's tech switch time, baby. And what are we getting? Steeled arrow. That's uh, ranged, I guess, damage ranged pierce upgrade. So that could uh, could indicate the future. Also, T-Bird was rolling forward with a trebuchet. Decided to pull that back. Too many Mustafati warriors. Too many Donzos. 
Second TC up, by the way, that bears mentioning for T-Bird. Costs 900 wood uh, as the Mongols, and no stone, obviously. Since they uh, use their stone in a different manner than other civilizations. Fully on wood cost for that TC. A little bit prohibitive, uh, if I'm being honest, but... Gotta do what you gotta do. And that vill count difference is just going to keep climbing. 73-34 now. But the curl tie is gonna go down. It's gonna burn down. Maybe. Wait for it. And these men at arms really not finding the value that they uh, that they want to. Landmark victory approaching here. Curl tie down for our Mongol player. And it looks like we're sprinkling in veteran Mangadai. Mustafati Warriors, we see zero plus one armor, that's ranged armor, zero normal melee armor, 110 HP. I want to see a man at arm and compare. Four plus one ranged armor, four plus one melee, 115 HP. So Mustafati, much more glass cannon type of unit. Attack nine plus 15 versus heavy, that's insane. 13 attack on the man at arms. So, suffice it to say, Mangadai's will, uh, they'll do well, you know, uh, when it comes to a uh, fight there. Donzos are better than normal spearmen versus ranged units. They have their little shield, so they're gonna have, I think, right? Isn't that how that works? They have their javelin, right? Squeaky actually going for the attack here. Might actually have to push back purple a little bit more. Trying to save that treb once again. It's really really gotten no value out of that treb. Vill difference. Uh, and not looking at the fight here. Two to one, like David has said here. It's really just uh, pulling ahead for purple. Just needs to find a way to push in. And Squeaky not really able to get out the same quantities of military. He's going for stables in the back. Stables, archery ranges. See what he's able to pull up with our... With the Malian tech tree. Also, okay, he's going for a little more gold mining on both of these, so. Still has that gold income. Researching veteran warrior scout now. So the warrior scout stables. I'm wondering what he's gonna do with those scouts. He's queued up a bunch of scouts in one stable here. Looks like T-Bird needs to build a few more pastures. <laughs> Always the Mongol problems. And he's moving out with the Mangudai, which can fire while moving. That's their main uh, that's their main, main power. They've been nerfed pretty heavily because they were just utterly destroying in masses and in team play. So they're not usually super viable. Uh, they're pretty expensive too. Uh, not super viable in 1v1s necessarily, but uh, into this kind of unit comp, it's a great, it's a great choice I think if you can afford it. And also like the eco difference alone is, is significant enough that any unit, as long as it's not completely hard countered, should do the job for purple. Also, I've been playing a lot of Age of Empires 2, and I love playing with cav archers in Age 2. So this is basically the same thing, right? Looks like uh, we're gonna find some more villager kills on that tower. Keep actually going up for Squeaky G on the curl tie. <laughs> it's gonna make sure that can't be done. Cannot be repaired anytime soon. And uh, let's see here. Looks like these uh, these Mangadires are in just the right place at the right time to spot some warrior scouts running to the other side of the map. Squeaky able to get three across beforehand, and T-Bird actually gonna go. Uh, he's actually gonna go look for them with, with half the force, and we're really just looking for a for a finishing blow from T-Bird. Usually that will either be a resign from the uh, from the losing player. Or a landmark destruction. Probably with Squeaky G on the battlefield, it's gonna have to be these three landmarks destroyed. So, see how long it takes Purple to maybe go for that. 
Unless Squeaky can pull uh, any kind of tricks out of his hat here. You never know with this guy. Maybe he's gonna, you're gonna look away for one second and he's gonna have 30 rams down here in the bottom corner. Purple camping those stables now. And uh, it may not be a landmark snipe, but it is gonna be uh, an attempt attempted dock snipe with these warrior scouts. So. Also, the Malian player here going for javelin throwers, one of the rare ranged anti-archer units in Age of Empires 4. You don't get that every day. It's a Malian unique unit. Pretty expensive and slow firing, but if you get enough of them, use them in the right way, they can be very effective. And against Mangadite too, really effective. Mangadite glass cannons to the extreme, 105 HP there. Squeaky still moving out with more warrior scouts. He really wants to get this dock down. It was the last thing he does. War junk out for purple though. And looks like this mass is what he wants to finish the game with. Doesn't I don't think I actually knew, by the way, that there's a, there's a castle here at the time. But and I roving around trying to cause havoc while the main push with the two trebuchets starts working on those landmarks. Dang, more of the squeaky guy? Yeah, well, I got news for you. There's like two more matches with this squeaky guy still incoming today. He's been all around. He's been all up and around the place. Veteran javelin throwers looking to protect the gold. A night of losses. <laughs> oh no. Well, not necessarily. Okay, we got Landmark Victory approaching on the left side now. Also, apparently that goes away after a while on the caster mode. I really appreciate that feature. Because technically Squeaky still has a Landmark Victory approaching. Uh, with, with the curl tied down, but it's just disappeared. Thank you, Capture Age or whatever devs are working on this mode still. T-Bird, seeing those uh, javelin throwers, looks like is actually is getting a hui hui pow. A unique... What is that? Bell? What is that? What's Who's ringing the bells? That's the town bell. Is that the town bell? The new thing they added in the new patch? Hopefully we get a series this game. Yeah, I mean, we'll get at least two games, right? Man, that bell is... it rings out across the entire map. I think that might have been me accidentally ringing it. Now that I think back. Hui Hui Pao. In the new... it's not really new. It's, it used to be campaign only, Omega, Trebuchet. I built the Kaganet Palace for the H4 landmark. The, the Kaganet Palace. I'm a little congested. I can't pronounce all these Mongolian names. So apologies. Automatically spawns diverse armies from across the Mongol Empire and its dominions. So as you can see now, we're getting elite knights coming in. He just made that so he can say the fun name on stream. Exactly. Now we'll see if Squeaky can hold out until it reaches the front lines. I don't know though. There's two more landmarks to go for Purple to take out with these two trebs. <laughs> We do have one veteran sofa on the... Actually, there are six. Where are they? Where are these sofas at? Oh, and uh, also elite horse archers. These are the Mongol... Or the, not, sorry, no, the Rus horse archers. You can get these from the uh, Congamit Palace as well. I'm just wondering where those... Where those uh, sofas are at. Is there a cool unit? There we go. Okay. Do we have... I don't think we have imported armor or anything like that. Squeaky's still yeah, in, in Castle Age. Forever Castle. Not gonna be, uh... Not gonna be looking to go up in, to Imperial at any time soon himself. And these trebs... Act, oh, we do see it in action. There it is. Look at that. Maybe a little bit self-gratuitous here, but... Oh! Oh! Look at that guy go! Rare sight. 
exactly. Also, maybe dropping an outpost there. We'll see if that goes up. Usually, you do want to be placing outposts when you're attacking as the Mongols, so you get that Yam Network speed boost, but we did not do that here in this game. As the army count and the eco count, everything is just drawing to a close here for Squeaky in the first game of this match. Is the mobile shooting the only difference between the two? I mean, besides like balance uh, differences, like uh, there probably is a lot less HP. 150 on the horse archer, 126 on the main today. Probably some damage differences to 14 plus 2, 6 plus 2 on Mangudai. They really have nerfed Mangudai into oblivion, honestly. But mobile shooting is the main the main thing. It's super easy to micro them. And Squeaky gets eliminated there with that uh, landmark going down. Main TC. So, GG on uh, game 1. Total unit count. I mean, this is for... Uh, for all those historians out there. I don't know if we're really gonna learn anything particularly new here. I guess economy count versus village account is always interesting when there's fish in play. There weren't a huge amount of fish added though. It kind of just trickled in over time there. And uh, it's just coming up T-Bird for this one. The only thing that matters is bill count. Well. There we go. It was close until the uh, until the attacks began. T-Bird in purple, playing as the Ottomans on the uh, southwest side of the map, and Squeaky G here for game two in yellow, playing as the Rus. We're on Mega Random. We got the River Mega Random. There's like three Mega Random generations in Age Four, and uh, and we got the River one. <laughs> Frick, whatever that guy thinks. All right. All right, I'll, uh, I'll say one thing right now. I, I was the purple player here, obviously. Did not realize that Squeaky was playing the Roos until uh, about 10 minutes into the game. So he's gonna get all the, all the, sh all the deer he can ask for for free. Yeah, they need, they need to like add, add like, uh, I don't know, like building chance. On, on Mega Random, like, uh, give me, like, the chance to get a tower or a barracks or, like, walls or something, you know? Maybe that would be too much to ask for in 3D, but still, Mega Random is fantastic. Can't complain too much. The Yummy Bunti, all he could ask, collecting those in. Yeah, ye oldy roos sneak. Squeaky G, uh, back, in the, back in the olden days, back in 2021... Roos were his first main sieve, so he's back. The meta may have changed somewhat, but that doesn't matter too much here in, in A-League, right? As long as the right choices are made, the right times. Hunting cabin, house, and lumber camp down for Squeaky G. So he's, he's got the, uh, the basics down for the Roos opening. T-Bird with the Ottomans. Uh, they already do it for Empire Wars. Oh, true. That's a good point. We should play more Empire Wars, by the way. That could be interesting. Um, this is... Uh, I couldn't play Mongols again, right? Because I won with them in game one. So I was kind of scratching my head on what to do next. Could have could have gone Abbasid, I guess. Could have gone with like a new Civ or something. But I kind of just wanted to try something... Something interesting. These the Ottomans always uh, always enjoy the the military schools and the and how the, all that interplays with the blacksmith and stuff. So yeah, definitely the Mega Random script could be updated a little bit in Age Four. Seeing how much everybody enjoys it already, I guess they maybe don't want to mess with it, right? They, they've uh, found something that people like. They don't want to mess it up too much. Going on to stone now for T-Bird, possibly for military schools. And it's going to be a lot more messy here for a, for a purple player this game. I'm just going to say that now. I got a little bit of foreknowledge, but uh, really not not really working off of any kind of predetermined uh, build specific to this sieve. Just kind of winging it. Squeaky G in yellow going 
uh, for the Golden Gate for age two. Mm, I think, I mean, that's a solid landmark. I think both the Golden Gate and the Kremlin these days are viewed as pretty good. But Kremlin a little more defensive, Golden Gate a little more economic. You can buy some stone, get some TCs. Although they have nerfed that strategy as they have with every strategy in age four that's fun. It always gets nerfed, <laughs> it feels like. <laughs> Oh, that's enough crying. It's enough whining. Twin Menoret Madras for the Ottoman player. Solid, standard, Feudal Age landmark. There's going to be some berries. There's going to be two berries generated every once in a while on each side of this landmark. So just free food safe under the TC forever. In, uh, what would I add infinitum, I guess? They could also add the entire map pool to Mega Random. Yeah, that'd be interesting. That'd be really neat. I feel like they should, if they're if if what I'm think, guessing is right, that they just don't want to mess with what people already enjoy by like tweaking it to add more craziness. Just make a new one and call it hyper random, right? There's precedent for that in Age Two as well. There's like mods. There's a hyper random mod. Uh, but just anything uh, anything like that, I think people would really enjoy. T-Bird going for some sheep snipes. Squeaky still just taking out those deer. We can see, is he mining gold at this point? The answer there is no. So 51 gold per minute with 225 in the bank after aging up is pretty solid for that roost booty. Also, T-Bird going for a house wall here in age four may not work out too well for him, but we'll see. Yeah, definitely, definitely it could go wrong. I mean, you're kind of playing the, you're kind of playing roulette when you pick Mega Random, anyways. So, you know, <laughs> players just like that uh, kind of chaotic energy, especially in those two v two v two v twos. A lot of good scouting from Squeaky G here in the early game. Excuse me. And uh, t bird with four on stone now. Got 440 stone. You can build second town center. Uh, you can build more town centers in the feudal age in Age of Empires 4. Different to Age 2, once again. I feel like I always have to say that caveat. Um, so maybe we'll see another town center. t bird going to wall off some of these choke points here too. Or it's also possible these are just for that military school. T-Bird really struggling now with the wood income here. So again, like I mentioned last game, I feel like wood is just gathered so slowly in this game comparatively. <laughs> um, but we live and we learn. Squeaky G dropping some more hunting cabins, stables, and also I for neglected to mention early knight coming out getting a villager kill there very good from squeaky for the with that uh, early roost knight play there's a town bell ring low elo town bell uh, uh, we're just trying everything out now maybe it's good in age of Empires. maybe you'll see beastie cutie clicking the town bell in the next red bull Wall of the legacy it could happen look at those sheep oh yeah we got some sheep also we had the um, first Vizier, Grand Vizier points that wall came out just in time. Good grief. For T-Bird, I think what I chose, I was, I like to just beeline all the military school ones. So probably it was whatever the first military school Vizier point is. Now, is Purple going to be able to one tap all of these walls down in time to block the knight? It looks like that's going to happen. There is still a gap on the north, but Villager gets that hit in. And the uh, Knights are locked out of the south for now. So good defense from purple. Good damage control so far. Making no military yet. And also fishing on the rivers. You'll have to see it. The old wall post. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm unsure. I think you can still delete those while, before they're built and get the food back, the wood back. But also... I think they don't cost any wood anymore. I'm pretty sure the wall posts are free now. And also they build instantly with one tap. I don't know why they even still exist in the game. They've been updated in the last update. 
They're doing good things with updates in H4 still these days. Squeaky gonna beeline that dock as he should. Good value to take that down. And he is going for a blacksmith at home. Villager count is also even, even uh, including the fishing, the six fishing ships. The eco count is very close, so. Right, that, that like little bar does include eco. I'm not crazy, right? Shift control A. There we go. This is Squeaky G's economy. 31 villagers. Switch over. 31 villagers. Seven. Oh, wait. this bar does not include fishing ships. Oh my. Okay. So the fishing ships are just not represented anywhere ever in caster mode. We'll have to keep that in mind. All right. Well, some of the casting from last game, uh, incorrect. There was just a flat villager difference there. But this game... Keep in mind there are seven fishing ships out there, though they are not working right now. Because Squeaky is doing a great job knocking those docks down. Looks like we're going to go for a proxy dock, <laughs> though, on the on the river in the north. And Squeaky, I think we'll get the charge off. And doesn't get the kill there. Close, though. Man, charging knights, charging lancers in H4 are so vicious, man. Second town center for Squeaky G. I, did, I actually didn't know he dropped that so quickly. Also, just a double close TC for purple. No military schools yet, just town centers and economy. Actually, no military yet either, just walls. And uh, here's our first barracks. Finally deciding. Maybe with this many knights, it's time for some spearmen. And gonna go... See, now Now we've got problems with the house wall. The little, the little silly house wall decision. Houses don't block uh, village or unit pathing, right? So I gotta like wall around it awkwardly. Now this guy's gonna go build the post, and that means he's not gonna be able to get out. So the whole whole situation going on there. Unraidable, that's right. Also walling up towards the town center on the north. As a Mongol main, uh, really uh, gotta take my chances to build walls and enjoy them while I can. What was that noise? You guys hear that noise? I think I know what that noise was. Wait, maybe not. It was like a there was like a saber noise or something. Interesting. I think that that was probably yes. I know what that was. Didn't didn't click the the vizier point until just now, and uh, that was the the military schools effects production faster. Uh, vizier point selection noise coming through. That's basically a house wall in age four, yeah. Gonna have to repair that palisade for now. And, ooh, got to get more water. Going for a second military school. These berries are uh, really in the way, by the way. Like, come on. Get them out of here. Gather those berries up faster, fellas. Come on now. Back at Squeaky G's base, upgrades rolling in bloomery, wheelbarrow, archery range as well now. The the standard follow up, follow up to a night over. By the way, I looked away at exactly the wrong time. Looks like he got at least one more villager kill there. Early knights are finding value still. As the uh, the Mehmed Imperial Academy is just coming out. Like, in the middle of the war zone. Okay. I think I'm looking for a, an optimal place to put the blacksmith right now. And coming up coming up short. 43, uh, 43, 41 with the villager numbers. 44, 44. Very solid stuff. Minus the fishing ships, of course. But you gotta do what you gotta do. And it looks like enough spearmen came out just in time. Military schools both on spearmen protect that MIA as it goes up. Squeaky definitely saw that. If he noticed it, who can say? But definitely that H3 landmark construction was in his field of vision with those night raids. So we'll see what he decides to do about that. Going for uh, siege engineering. So the archers he's making now, again, like I was mentioning, as the natural follow-up to, uh, to cavalry to a night opening. 
you want to add archers typically because your enemy's going to add spears so you counter the spears with archers no building walls in h4 but can still cause major pathing issues <laughs> yeah i mean they've been improved also with wall collision it's been improved with buildings but uh definitely if you're trying to do any kind of ram uh ra ram ratted ratted ramble any kind of rams action you're gonna have issues there's too many houses in the way these guys just are I, they're like they're practicing or something they're doing formation flying they're just back here and let me tell you as a player like in this game having those guys back there i was like checking that constantly over and over like seeing what is he doing back here what what are these guys all running around for making sure they're not there but uh after the game we, uh, we were talking about it he said they were just on patrol he didn't even know they were they were like there at all so really interesting how that how that affects the mentality in, in game we're uh, really struggling with our with our city building, with our placement of all these buildings, had to go like double blacksmith in order to get the bonuses. <laughs> these berries all over here in the way, but gonna be able to do it. And also t dropping a forward town center, trying to secure another gold pile. This gold still is seeing him through. Also could have gone like over to the left side, didn't even think about that at all. And now the archers hit, first time purple has seen any archers. That's going to come as a little bit of a surprise. Only has spearmen out right now. And a few sapahi, but not many. Coming out of those military schools. So much room behind the TC. That's also true. Behind the TC, there's just space for days. You see a lot there. And we're going to we're going to see the rare triple TC on one screen play. This is is protecting no resources. It's solely to produce vills. I guess it protects the, the lumber camp for now. But we're just dancing, skirmishing in the front here. These early knights still uh, still posing a threat as a couple stables are built under the influence again of these blacksmiths, which will mean that units made out of them are produced more quickly. Never let them know your next move. <laughs> Back in Squeaky's base. Looks like he's gonna have to find a new gold mine. By the way, chat. Are we. Uh, this just lists them all. It doesn't actually say which bounty level we're on. Okay. Either way, bounty is there. Going up to the next gold mine. And I feel like the narrative is all happening here, so that's why I'm always just looking at the purple base still. With, uh, with all Squeaky's offensive army, with one ram uh, rambling around here. Finally, those barriers have been used up. Maybe there's room for another building here, maybe not. Just, what is that, three tiles? Four tiles? Three tiles? I don't know. Ram produced for T-Bird out of the Mehmed Imperial Academy. Not sure what that could be for. There's nothing here. But... Maybe just to soak up some damage. And these archers really doing work for Squeaky G. T-Bird utilizing the Man-at-Arms timing in game one. Slow to the draw as far as that goes this game, but I guess the Knights are uh, a little bit, causing a little bit of variation from, uh, from the opponent. Good play from Yellow to really do that. Also, he's slurping up, look at these scouts. Taking in all the deer on across the entire map. Getting a lot of value out of these scouts, not just losing them to the horsemen too. It's really, really solid. Another barracks down for purple, and also purple is pop capped. Is he gonna build another house? Maybe somewhere. Still pop capped. <laughs> any houses? Can we get any houses here? There it is. Here is that Castle Age coming in for Squeaky G now. High trade house. Out in the front. You don't see it every day. He feels secure. I guess it's not really the front. 
I'm not sure where the front of Squeaky's base would be. I guess here on this crossing. This is a little out of the way. Squeaky going for another ram built remotely. Also some blacksmith upgrades coming on, on both sides. Double. Here we go. Yeah. I'm again feeling the the wood gathering being an issue. Going for double upgrades on the lumber on the lumber camp there. Cross cut saw, maybe not too far off. Best gold value. Oh, you're right. I didn't even think about that. I didn't even think about the one thing that the the landmark is for, right? Also, it says age two economic limit. Hey, devs, relic, uh, forgotten worlds. I found a typo. Uh, it's pretty. A very important one, I think, here. Age 2 economic landmark, apparently. High trade house. Unless I'm missing something. Generates gold like a hunting cabin with the value increased by plus 400% without claiming any trees. Oh, so you can double up with hunting cabins. I think that's what that means. Spawns a huntable deer every 60 seconds. Villagers can drop off food at this building. So similar in some ways to the um, Twin Minaret Madras in that it produces free food. Also guarantees, I think, that the roosts will end up with their maximum bounty at some point. And uh, you got to just look around when you're trying to place it. It'll like tell you a readout of where the best gold value will be. So you got to get as many trees in there as possible. Big fight coming in on T-Bird's side of the river. Looks like the unit composition is there to clean up these feudal age archers and what few early knights there are out for yellow and it's looking like well the eco count is actually on squeaky side pretty heavily i think he's been a little more consistent with the villager production both players are actually on three tcs here as well those fishing ships still bringing in value though T-Bird going to pull back and uh, lock things down. This is the first time he hasn't been on the back foot all game. So just trying to solidify, get another town center up on this gold mine. And <laughs> these, these knights are still back here. Just roving around. Wait. Nope, they're still going. Such a weird patrol path thing. Like, sometimes they go further, sometimes... It's so interesting. Squeaky ahead on the vills and resources. Resources per minute. Let's take a look at that really fast. It looks like it's all uh, all coming up squeaky for now. Let's see what happens once that TC gets built. Finally, purple clears this out. It's like uh, yeah, some interesting eco balance going on. Squeaky pulls back those early knights. Are they uh, they're still early knights? Full full knights now. T bird with like a like some some kind of picturesque assault force here. Just fighting his time. <laughs> Alright, sure, sure, sure. Gotta make units. Yeah, so I guess uh if we're looking here. Army difference 6423. Squeaky uh same age, better better economy, but not really unit production. Seven, we got I mean, we got knights coming in, so that's good. How many production buildings are we dealing with as well? A lot more production buildings being built. So we'll see how. Oh whoa, excuse me. See how long it takes uh, T Bird to move out, but it might be a little more urgent than he's feeling. Because Squeaky could definitely make the army to fight this off. Sending out a screening force of knights to see what's up. Check things out. Maybe go for a raid if it's open. It's not open. How does that Mangonel hit that range? What is that range? <laughs> okay. And it uh, looks like T-Bird going to go for the push now. Crossbows are in for Squeaky G. Crossbow Knight. Expensive comp, but it could do the job here. Looks like the numbers aren't... Okay, it's... Oh my goodness. What is... Okay, Purple is taking his time. Feels pretty confident here, I guess, on the numbers. Might take a few more losses here at the front. There needs to... But we're getting the siege going. Getting more production buildings down at home with blacksmiths. And taking our vizier points. 
I think this one might be, we might see some sheep spawn. Yeah, there they are. <laughs> That's the, uh, I don't know. I don't remember what it's called. You get like eight sheep at the TC and you also increase the mining speed of villagers. It's a, it's a weird combination of things. Didn't really want the sheep at the time, but mining speed is always good. So, here we go. We got the attack coming in. Going for the finishing blow, maybe, if there's enough seed behind this. More spearmen for T-Bird. And he's just going to dive underneath the, the fire from the his wooden fortresses, wooden town centers. Okay, tool tips update. One ram pushing that home TC. No, that's the secondary TC, which can only fit seven bills now in this new update. And uh, 2,500 HP. I guess that's... The, why is it not selecting the right... 7,000 HP for the, for the landmark TC, so... Secondary town centers uh, a lot weaker than they uh, used to be, I want to say. Again, I, uh, yeah, another instance of uh, those updates really coming into play. Squeaky G taking losses, villager count swings in T-Bird's favor with that timing. Score not looking too hot for Squeaky, he was able to kill the dock though, has a bunch of knights over here on the left. Could be used at home, could be used to attack, but there's a lot going on right now in the base. And pretty much what Squeaky needs is production. 3,000 gold in the bank. Istanbul Observatory for T-Bird. That's like a super blacksmith, basically. It'll increase even more the production speed of buildings around it and around other blacksmiths. Look for that Imperial Age. And uh, just one ram, bunch of bunch of trash spearmen, bunch of man at arms. It's just a numbers game now. It's like it's kind of surprising to see the imperial. I guess when you're on the front foot like this, you're confident enough to throw the resources into it. Not necessarily needed right now. Maybe could have been a little more efficiently using those resources to make siege and army and whatnot. But unless Squeaky G can get some more army out, unfortunately, all these production buildings are right on the front line. What has become the front line now? It looks like he's kind of running out of steam a little bit. Taking out the docks, though, once again. <laughs> And he has got a lot of value with this with this raid. The tension is on the front for T-Bird. It's not back here. So villagers going to have to fend for themselves. Some just standing there taking hits. And uh, let's see if we got... Is that an archer? Why is there an archer? Okay. Landmark TC is being manganelled. And after that, I guess there are still three full uh, landmarks here, so none down yet for Squeaky. Just a big dent made in the eco. And a lot of units. It's actually moved up to the north. There's a nice gold mine up here, plenty of wood. By the way, let me say, this uh, Japanese tree biome, beautiful, beautiful biome. Look at, we got flowers in the grass, we got, man. Pink, beautiful pink trees. Love the love the variations of the biomes that they've been giving us. I just wish they would let the seasonal ones stay in the game so you can choose them in scenarios. So they're real nice looking. Give me back my dark mode, devs. Squeaky's still doing work with a few lancers on the left. T-Bird never able to fully like defend that side, wall it up at all. But... He's just hoping it doesn't matter. There are some spearmen in the area, should it become a serious issue. Golden Gate goes down to some torches. High Trade House at half HP. Main TC down. It's just a matter of how long Squeaky can survive. This has become a survival game now. Looks like some archers are 
on the field there. Is he, is he switching into just making archers? Yeah. I guess there are a lot of spearmen out for purple, so not a terrible play, but still plenty of man-at-arms as well. So. And mangonels, which will shred any archers. He's having fun over here, though. Oh. Knights go down. We don't need to look at that. Oh my goodness. These walls are really causing problems as far as the base building is concerned. <laughs> We're uh, very nice in the beginning of the game. I'll keep up as many ones. And now, one more hit on this high trade house. He's giving it all he's got. Archers did make it there, but that'll end game two. T-Bird goes up 2-0, wins the set, wins the match. And uh, there's, there's, there's some fun games. We've got the uh, stats here with our mega random second match, sec second game of the match. Villager count a lot closer to that game. I'm, I'm impressed. Yellow was able to actually be ahead on villagers for quite a good amount of that, but didn't quite have the uh, the army timing down. Got a little bit overrun. Solid raids with the knights, though. 